delighted to say now joining us is John Moore, who's got three runners. Uh, he's got military attack in the Dubai World Cup. He's got Dominant, who runs in the uh, Shima Classic, and Sterling City, who runs in the Golden Shaheen. Well, first up, let's talk about the uh, uh, horse you've got running in the Dubai World Cup, military attack. Um, obviously, a, a big moment to have a, a Hong Kong runner in the World Cup. Um, your, yes. your thought process as to why you wanted to have a crack at this race? Well, I entered him for two the uh, duty free and the world cup with the hope that he would get in the world cup but his his uh, form leading into uh, the gold cup um, a week or two back um probably was the reason for um, not being um, invited to run in the world cup so the duty free was was fine um but then uh, when he won so convincingly in the gold cup in hong kong um the um, director of racing in Hong Kong immediately approached me, Bill Nader, and he said, would you like to run in the World Cup? Because I'll give them a call over in Dubai and um, see whether we may be able to, uh, whether they'll be able to find a place for you. And uh, within 24 hours, they came back and said, you've got your run in the World Cup. So I was uh, um, very excited about uh, having that opportunity. And obviously, though, the, the unknown quant quantity is the, is the surface. But so what preparations have you made? Obviously, running here, coming over here, you've managed to give them a spin out there. But anything you can be able to do before coming here? Well, just wor working in the reverse direction um, was uh, an important uh, uh, part. Uh, with respect to horses um, acclimatising to everything from you know from barn to uh, the direction they go around, but um, as everybody knows in Hong Kong we work on a, a dirt surface, a very good dirt surface that's so not uh, that uh, deep at all, and I find that um, these th two of them work very well on it. Uh, military attack is always showing a. Uh, um, he always gallops very well on it, um, and so does Sterling City. So the transition from our dirt to uh, to Peter Tapita uh, is not a problem. I I wouldn't be entering them unless I thought they were going to handle the surface. And assessing his form, um, you presumably you couldn't be more pleased with the, what the horse has shown leading up to a crack at this race, which you, as you say you're delighted to be in the lineup. Well, everybody says military attacks really hits his straps this time of uh, our Hong Kong season, which I don't uh, totally agree with, because he's fully acclimatised now in Hong Kong. He's been a few seasons now. And um, I just think in the, uh, in the International Cup, he, um, he just didn't get away cleanly. He got back into a position where he, I didn't give him much hope, considering that um, it's already slowly, always slowly run the Invitation Cup. So he was given a lot to do, but his closing sectionals were, were exceptionally good. And um, for that reason, I, um, I thought it wise that I wasn't having, the chemistry wasn't working with Zach Purton after that. And I said to the owner, why don't we, you know, we change jocks. We've got the magician now riding in Hong Kong, Mr. Marrera. So I thought that that would be the perfect... Uh, uh, jock for the horse, and I, I was 100% right. He did the job in admirable fashion, and um, and um, here we are in Dubai. And moving on to the other horses, a couple of dominant. Um, again, how would you assess his form coming into this race, and what you've in the, in the preparations? Well, as everybody knows, I um, leading into the Vars in Hong Kong, I wasn't that confident that we're, I'd got enough mileage into the horse's legs, and I made that very, uh, very uh, open to all the press in Hong Kong, and how wrong I was, and I, it, but uh, to, uh, to be human. <laughs> so, um, yes, we drew the poor gate, and that even <laughs> made things look really bad from a trainer's point of view. Um, so, of course, as everybody knows, I'd, I'd spoke to Zach and said, Jack, just take him back and ride him for luck. Um, we all know it about the 600, the place really slowed up and Lafrugue was taken back through the field. He got an unimpeded run going around the field and, um, and went on to win, which was, um, which was very exciting from a Hong Kong point of view because we haven't won it for years. From my point of view, it's the only race that I haven't run uh, with respect on the international uh, race day. So to win that, I was just elated. But now, coming to Dubai, with respect to Dominance Fitness, he is a very fit horse. We have the mileage in his legs. Uh, his run the other day, uh, including his trial last Tuesday, was exceptionally good. Um, so going into the race, 
I know there's, you know, you've got some serious racehorses here, but um, the Magician, the uh, Japan Cup winner, um, also Den um, Denim and Ruby second to um, the gen Gentle Donna. Um, I, I, I just hope that we can draw the right sort of gate where we uh, don't get too far away from them earlier on, where we like to have to ride him in Hong Kong too far off the speed. But um, I think he, he has a deserved place in the race. And um, um, judging from when he's arrived, you know, he's just taken to the environment so, so well. He's eating up. His, his, his skin colour is absolutely fantastic. He, as I said, he was bucking his brand off this morning when he went round for the first time on the uh, tapeta. So... Um, yeah, I, I reckon he's, he's he's a reasonable each way work, each way bet. Do you think? I mean, you mentioned those outstanding horses, and obviously we've had Gentle Donna's trainer in here, and he says she's in the form of her life. Do you do you feel you need to? Will you need to raise your game, or, or where do you where do you? Oh, definitely against the uh, quality of horse flesh in this race, I think Dominant really has to r raise his game, and not only his A game but A plus game, to uh, stand a chance in this sort of race. But I get the feeling you think he's capable of doing exactly that, get to A+. plus. Well, I, as I said, he's a fitter horse than what he was when he won the Vars in Hong Kong. From that point of view, um, I, I reckon that uh, he's very good each way, Valley. OK, on to the, um, the sprint race. Um, Sterling City, where, obviously, how do you assess his form coming to the race? And, you know, Rich, the, the other Hong Kong horse, Rich Tapestry, I mean, which one do you feel, do you feel you're the better horse? or? <laughs> Well, Rich Tapestry went round the other day here in Dubai and, and won very decisively and gave everybody the impression that, um, you know, on this uh, to be the surface, that he's the real deal. Well, that's accepted. But if you go back to Hong Kong form, um, I never saw Rich Tapestry as any danger to um, Sterling City in a any time they met at uh, group level. So from that point of view, um, okay, we've got to come here with our A game. The last two runs of Sterling City, he hasn't, he's been, um, you know, he's, he's had struggle finding uh, space in his races. Uh, he's got home like a train. He should have finished second to Lord Canaloa. And uh, the other day, I think he should have beat Lucky Nine in the race had he had a clear, clear run. So from this point of view, and uh, judging from his work this morning, my son was on board. He said the horse felt absolutely fantastic. He was half have it, wanting to squeal and have a buck coming down the running today because it's been a while since he's been on a racetrack, really. We've been over there on the quarantine ring. Mm. So from that point of view, and given that we're going to draw the right gate, which is very important on the Tabita with the 400-metre run-in, I think he's a live chance of winning the race. OK. Um, of which... Of the three, I mean, it's probably difficult for you to say, really, but are you most optimistic about Sterling City, or um, where would you...? Well, I take nothing away from military attack. He, everybody knows he's the real deal, and uh, if he can draw the right gate just in behind the speed, I think he'd, um, he'd be very close to, uh, um, to winning. Um, and the other, well, Sterling City, again, if he draws the right marble, I, I believe he'll be right there in the finish. OK, any questions for John? I think you covered all bases there, but it's done. Oh, that's done. Yep, sorry. Which, which horses uh, do you see as the biggest competitors for military uh, Ruler of the World and Belshazzar would be uh, just two off the top of my head. Of course, he hasn't had to run any lead-up. It's like me going to Melbourne with uh, military attack and uh, just going into one of the big cup races with no mileage in the legs. There's got to be a big query. But I was just going on uh, last year's form that if he could bring his A game, um, he'd be one of the horses to beat. But then the Hong Kong horses are coming here well into our season with all the necessary mileage in their legs. And that, that's why just on the day, we might be beating horses that may be better it's just that we've got the fitness on our sides. Tail between our legs. Well, right. <laughs> um, <laughs> how do you account for that and why do you think this year's team 
Well, there's eight of them here this year, and they're, they're the very best we've got in Hong Kong. We've, this is a very good crop of horses, you know, over the past few years in Hong Kong that have really come up to the elite level, been able to com compete on Group 1, um, um, at Group 1 level. And also, as I mentioned earlier, these are very fit horses, and they're, uh, the lead-up to the uh, Dubai, Dubai uh, Cup Series has, has been just absolutely perfect. So... Um, the team assembled, as I said, is the best that's ever come to Dubai so far. Very exciting. Excellent. I think Hong Kong's going to do very well. I, I wouldn't be surprised if he won three races.